There are some helpful features in EF Core migrations that you might not know about. Stick around as I'll reveal what they are and how you can use them. We're first going to have a look at entity type configuration. Now we set up a social media entity and that includes properties like the ID and the name. We're going to be adding configuration to it in EF Core. We've also got a MyDB context which inherits the entity framework core DB context class. Now we're going to override the onModelCreating method. Now normally what you can do is you can go through each entity and add your configuration, but there is a different way you can do it. So you can call model builder dot apply configuration from assembly. And then we can load in the assembly. So we call assembly dot load. This imports the system dot reflection namespace. We call the load method and we're going to import it from round the code dot helpful EF core. That's the namespace that we're using throughout this project. We want to add a configuration to our entity, so the name property in social media has a maximum length of 50 characters. To do that, we're going to add a new class and we're going to call it social media configuration. Now, in order for this to work, we need to implement the AI entity type configuration, passing in the social media entity as our generic type. Now we're getting a compile error here, and the reason being is that we need to implement the configure method. So to do that, we call the configure method, and we need to pass in the entity type builder type, and we pass in the social media entity as our generic type. Now to set the maximum length of name to 50 characters, we call builder.property. We can either select the ID or the name. We want to select the name, and we just set the max length. 50 characters. Next, we want to add our social media entity to our EF Core migrations. To do that, we go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, and Package Manager Console. To add the migration, we call add hyphen migration, then with a space, we're going to call it social media table. That's created our social media table migration, and looking at the name property, it's going to be setting it with a max length of 50 characters. To set up configuration in other entities, you need to create a configuration class for each entity, ensuring that you implement the I entity type configuration, passing in the entity as the generic type. From there, you'll be able to set your properties and configure it. Now, the reason this is working is because the namespace is roundthecode.helpful EF core. If we go into the MyDB context, go back to onModelCreating, we're applying configurations from this assembly, which is roundthecode.helpful EF core. So that's how that is working. Seed data is another EF core migration tool that we can use. It populates the database with an initial set of data. We're going to demonstrate this by using the social media entity that we just demonstrated. To add seed data to our social media entity, we go back to the social media configuration and we can add it to the configure method. So we're going to create a couple of records. The first one we'll create with an ID of one and we'll add Facebook to it. We'll do the same as well for Instagram. I'm going to give it an ID of two and the name is Instagram. And we'll do the same for LinkedIn. We'll give it an ID of three and then the name is LinkedIn. Now we need to add this as a migration. So we go to tools, new get package manager and package manager console. We call add hyphen migration and we're going to call it social media seed data. That's added our seed data to the migration. The next step is to go back to the package manager console and update the database. In our database, it's created our social media table. It's created the name with a maximum length of 50 characters. And when we open up the social media table, it's created our seed data of Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Value converters allow you to convert data into a specific format in the database and convert it back when using it in the application. We've set up a product entity, and this includes a created date time. We're going to store this in the database with the UTC format, but when we use it in the application, we're going to convert it to the server's local time zone. So to do that, we need to set up a converter. We're going to create a new class, and we're going to call it date time UTC converter. 
To make this work, we need to implement the value converter type, and we need to pass in a couple of generic types, and both of them are going to be date time. We then need to set up the constructor, and the date time UTC converter is parameterless, but we need to call the base constructor, and this is where we do the conversion. So when we store it in the database, we want to convert the time to universal time, and when we get it back to the database, we want to convert it to the local time zone. So to do that, we call datetime.specificKind, we pass in the date, we specify that it's a UTC date, and then we just convert it to the local time. Now to make this work, we need to add it to the product configuration. We've already set a configuration for the name, having a maximum length of 50 characters. We're now going to do the same for the created. So we call builder.property, get the created property and then we call has conversion and then we call our converter which is date time UTC converter. We then need to add the migration to the product table so we call it product table and then update the database. And we'll show that working in action later in the video. If call migrations has the ability to run a SQL command on the database when a migration is applied, let's add some data to the product table. First, we need to create an empty migration. We're just going to call it product SQL. This has created our empty migration. We can run our SQL scripts in the up method. So for this, we're going to insert a record into the product, the name in created columns. The name is going to have a value of book and the created is the time in UTC format. We'll add another one as well. We're just going to change the name to television. So we've now got television and book. We now need to apply that migration to the database. It's now created our product table with the relevant properties. And it's also created our data. It's run our SQL script and it's added our two records that we wish to add. Now that we have some data in the product table, we can go back to value converters and ensure that the date and time is working as it should do. In the MyDB context, we set up a DB set for our product entity, and we've also set up an API controller called product controller. This is getting the MyDB context, the product DB set, and returning all the results. Let's run the application. When returning the products, it's returning the time one hour ahead of UTC, so it's in 10.44. Going back into the database, it's reading 9.44, meaning this is the UTC time, and this is the time on the server, which is one hour ahead of UTC. So the converter is working, and if you want to know more about EF Core, watch our six-part series on how to get started with EF Core. The series will focus on how to create a DB context, how to add a migration, and how to insert, update, and delete a record in the database. It will also show you how to join tables together by using the include method.